My questions to staff, which I provided earlier, I'd like to go over. Um, the first one is in recommendation H, uh, page three of the report, uh, the recommendation to endorse removal of the Fairmont building contradicts Council's heritage policies approved by Council March 10th, 2020. Um, the policy context very specifically says rezoning should not result in the demolition or severe alteration of any building on uh, on the, v the Vancouver Heritage Register. Um, and furthermore, th that uh, it must, must be preserved, not kind of should be, but must be preserved and legal protection is required. So how do you respond to that? The policy statement set by the previous council for this property supersedes that, Councilwoman. How does that um, supersede a policy that this council stated on March 10th, 2020? It's a citywide policy. It's a great question, citywide policy. But the policy that was specifically developed for this property uh, would by be the, the prior, policy that controls. By the prior council. That's correct. But would but it is specifically for this property. It's not a citywide uh, blanket policy like but the 2020. The city, okay, so this is, would be a legal question, but the rezoning application was submitted on the 2nd of October, 2022, seven months after the, the current heritage policy was approved by this city council. So the applicant would have been aware of this policy context for the property at the time of the application, correct? I suppose so. I, I suppose they would, but that policy does not apply to this piece of property. Okay. Um, the Heritage Advisory Co Committee um, gave no direction or advice on this matter, uh, which would result in the unprecedented removal of an A building through a rezoning application. Um, on the March 2021 meetings, uh, minutes simply state that the chair thanked staff and applicants for the presentation and noted it was very informative, but there was no measure taken at that time by the Heritage Commission. Correct? That is correct. Um, have you considered the environmental impact of uh, taking out this building? Yes, we've done a full analysis of it, and, and, your, and the recommendation is to demolish the building. From the director of plan. So put it in landfill. That's very green. Okay. Are you aware we saw a piece of co correspondence come in that there was a burial on the site? This came in, I believe, through um, the RCMP uh, uh, RCMP graves. It, it's, it says that there's evidence of the burial on the site of the remains of at least one RCMP officer. Um, and that uh, has implications for the the RCMP. Are you aware of that, and how is that being addressed? I'll ask Kristen to address that, but it's my understanding that it was ashes and not a, not a burial. Yeah. Yeah. Um, during the policy statement phase, uh, we've been working with the RCMP veterans, and they made us aware that there is an urn under the flagpole or thought to be under the flagpole um, and Canada Lands and the MST have been very accommodating and willing to work with the RCMP to remove that from the site when redevelopment occurs. Thank you very much. Now my last question is um, to your as I'm just concerned about that. getting that was a staff question as opposed to the question for the applicants. I do. I, yeah, I ask you are. to indulge me, Mayor, and give her another minute. I've been a chair of Squamish Nation Council before, and I want to just share with you the staff responded that they have, they're making the adequate accommodations in regards to the remains. And I want to just share with you, historically, my great-grandfather, Jericho Charlie, my great-grandmother, Kwe Watt, my great-great-grandfather, Sequalton, and um, Lewis family, and the Jack family, had burials at the footing of the Burrard Street Bridge where it was going to be built. No consideration was given to for our feelings and our families, and we were forced to dig them up and move them up to the Mac Blow, to the where our family lived, 25 miles up Squamish River, 
Then the land was expropriated, given as a tree farm license, and a logging road had to be constructed. And they were asked to again to move the remains. They moved them again and brought them to Waywaycum, which is known as Brackendale. And there's historical truth about this in regards to even Homalchison, where my daughter, Skalautana, 80, lives, that there were burials there and that we were made to remove it. So I think being able to give some historical context, there's accommodations being made in regards to removing, repatriating them to another site. So I just had to share that because you hit my heart, my squalowing, my heart and mind when you said that, mm -hmm. because no one thought about my grandpa and my uncle August Hotsolano, anglicized version of his name, which is now the name of Sinalk Kitsilano. Them having to dig up the remains and move it for the settlers of Vancouver City. And I think, you know, we understand about taking care of remains and making sure adequate accommodations are made like the staff mentioned. So my apologies, I had to speak. Thank you. And I appreciate that very much. Um, it's just, uh, you of all people then would appreciate the sensitivity that the families would would feel. We're still in questions. No, I'm just, and I do have one more question. It's but too late. I do you appreciate, are over time and over to Councillor Wheat. 